Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is a gift that I've been given that I, and I never thought I would say this, but it's a recent gift given to me because of all the road construction that's been going on around campus. Normally my commute into campus takes me down Pioneer Road. I go through the town of Cedarburg. I hang a right onto Lakeshore Drive and then a left into the Wittenberg parking lot. And then I look for one of the parking spots in lot K or L or MNOP, whatever's right outside the Wartburg entrance. But that route really isn't available right now and for the foreseeable future because of all the construction that's being done on the Pioneer exit that's closed for repair. So I've been coming through the main entrance and I've been turning right at the main entrance. Normally I don't do this because I convince myself that I can save those extra few precious minutes in the morning and somehow I'm going to get so much more work done for saving those minutes, opting for the quickest, most efficient route into campus, head down, eyes narrowly focused in on the tasks of the day, but not lately. Lately, I've been trying to take my time after that right turn and that northeastern bend around our beautiful grounds, and then that magnificent look over Lake Michigan. I don't know if you ever do this as you're driving into campus around that bend where I, where I play this game, where I try to look as long as I can without being a danger to myself or others, because it's a spectacular view, isn't it? It's one that I take for granted way too often. Because when you actually take the time to take it all in, you realize the beauty that's before you each and every day here. Days where the colors of the sun just dance off a calm, watery sheet of glass. Or maybe more a day like today, a cloudy and windy day that stirs up the white caps that slap against the sand and the rocks. But all of it is glorious. All of it expansive and eye-opening. It's a view that could change you, maybe, or at least the start to your day, the mood of your morning, if you let it. Our psalm this morning, however, it takes that view even further. In the eyes of the writer of this psalm, Psalm 148, everything in all creation is meant and made to give God praise. Everything, everyone, everywhere is to praise the Lord. Every object in creation can become this looking glass into seeing God and his power and his care, God's hand at work for us. And I don't know about you, but when I think of praise, I think about moments like being right here in this chapel at opening service where we sing together that great hymn 941, that hymn of praise acknowledging God for all that he has done, our everlasting Father to whom the heavens sing, all the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, seraphim, all of us crying out together bringing our highest praise. Or I think about the terrace room filled with students on a Sunday night singing out to God, our Savior, in the way we just did, taking that God-given gift of our breath and letting it pour out our praise to the maker of everything because he is worthy of it all. It's usually the way I think about praise. It's God's people singing out together for all God has done for us, and these are great and praiseworthy things. But our psalm today, It really pops the lid right off our operating definition of praise. It lifts our heads and it opens our eyes to see so much more around us. Praise the Lord from the heavens and the heights. Praise him sun and moon, shining stars in the highest heavens. Praise the Lord from the earth, great sea creatures and deeps, fire and hail, storm and winds, mountains, hills, fruit trees, burly beasts, and creeping things. Kings and people of influence, the old and the young alike, let them all praise the name of the Lord. Because God established it all. Because God commanded, and with a word of his voice, all of this came to be. There is nothing too high and heavenly that is above praising God, and there is nothing too lowly and earthy that is beneath praising our God. 
Praising God, according to our psalm, is about every piece of creation doing exactly what it was meant and made to do. From the highest and loftiest of things to the most ordinary, down-to-earth kinds of things. And along with all our songs, praise can be found in us, living out everything that God has given us and made us to do. It's the students diligently studying and finishing assignments and papers and tests. It's found in listening and caring for, for a roommate or a friend who's in need. It's the dedicated housekeepers who clean our facilities. They all praise the Lord. It's the professors who equip, equip their classes for careers of service. The admissions team that creates a sense of belonging for all who visit here. The administrators who seek discernment and cast vision for our university. They all praise the Lord. It's the radios that blip on when chapel's done. The posting and tacking up of flyers that call people together in community. The popping of popcorn on Fridays to celebrate another week's end. They can all praise the Lord. It's found in all of us going about our everyday, earthy, ordinary business, along with the rest of creation, but all seen with a glorious purpose, because all of this is from the Lord. And when we're at our best, we're doing what God has meant and made us to do, and that brings praise to him. Sometimes we approach life with our heads down, Sometimes we approach life with our eyes so narrowly focused on just the things we're worried about, the things we think we need to do or control in our lives. And sometimes we can think about things like praise and our faith and our relationship with God as something that just happens in a specific place at a specific time. Another compartment of our lives along with everything else. But it's our psalm today. It gives us a beautiful kind of detour. It's one that puts us on a path to consider all that God has made and done, how all things can point us back to him. And we can live a life of praise. And that's a spectacular view, isn't it? If those stones down on the bluff can cry out to God and praise 24-7 for simply being how God has made them to be, how much more you and I the ones not just made by God, but the ones redeemed by him. You and I, for whom God sent his only son, our eternal, all-powerful maker, who was raised up on a cross to die for our sins so that three days later he could rise from the tomb, beating sin and death forever and for you. So that now, even in our sinful brokenness, there's beauty before us each and every day. The promise that if God can make and take care of all this in creation, how much more then will he take care of and be attentive to you? You the one that Jesus loves. That's a God who's expansive and eye-opening. He can change your entire view of life if you let him. It's not an overly complicated process, really. In fact, we were made for this. Just breathe in his grace and pour out your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto that life everlasting. Amen. We stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this day for all that you are and for all that you've done for us, for every good thing that you've created in this world and how this goodness reflects your character and your power. We thank and praise you for how you use all of this for our good ultimately, supporting us in body and soul and most of all for the precious gift of our Savior Jesus who joined his creation, showing us the full extent of your love. We pray for all who call on you this day for help in times of trouble. We lift up especially student Travis Rasmussen and his family, whose grandfather passed away on Sunday. Heavenly Father, bring comfort to Travis and his family 
as they celebrate the life of his grandfather and the life that they shared together as family. Give peace and hope in this time of loss and the certainty in knowing that all who trust in Jesus as their Savior will live on forever. We lift up those who are in need of healing this day. We pray for the mother of student Peyton Green, who is battling cancer, as well as the mother of graduate student Katie Vissers, who is in intensive care and is now recovering. Merciful Lord, give to each of these a strength to endure these difficult afflictions. Provide answers and healing as you can bring it to them, working through all who care for them that they would be restored and return fully to their lives and to their loved ones. Heavenly Father, we also pray for the cousin of Marissa Klopp, who is being assessed to see if she is a candidate for double lung transplant. Dear Lord, we pray wisdom for doctors, for all who attend to Krista, that you would be at work in this process and bring about the best possible care that she can receive, and also for peace that comes in knowing your love and your presence with her during this difficult time. All these prayers we lift before your throne of grace, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Now we go with God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.